we're inside my feature elevate friday you know what i mean uh because we want to send some love and encouragement to persons who may be going through adversity who feel like giving up and also i want to showcase people who yes you see the finished product now or you see them at a place in their life that it looks like uh things are going for them and you see the glory but you don't know them story you see them life but you don't know the sacrifice and so many times people stay on the sideline and judge and class and watch him you can go on and say watch her she can go on and say watch him but if you know some part of where people are come from then your judgment would come from a different place i want to also take this opportunity to say good afternoon uh to all the single parents right single mothers single fathers grandmothers guardians who would have uh, helped with the csec and the cape i know that education is a partnership between parents teacher and student and oftentimes you know you have grandmothers and you have single parents who don't have no support too I want to big up here just a Shireen Chambers because she have our son Asani McIntosh. And I got to tell you, he attended uh, 10th Meadowbrook High School, got seven subjects, really decent young man. And I have to say, good afternoon. You know, when as a parent, when you have a decent child, uh, you know, you have to really love them and appreciate a Kelly Cook. guess what? Sometimes when people reach certain age, you know, you could have good like goal, you could have preached like Paul from the Isle of Patmos. They don't, they must listen to you. So when you have children who listen, children who are disciplined, children who hear and obey you you know and i work with you you have to you know be grateful for that and so i wanted to take the opportunity as well to big up all those single parents who would have put time into work who would have put a lot of effort into their children who would have made a lot of sacrifice put themselves aside put their needs aside so that their children could go through and prosper and i just want to send you some strength some love and some celebration and you deserve to pat yourself on the shoulder for a job well done my special guest this afternoon in elevate friday is none other than dashan hendrix you've seen him on your tv you've heard his voice he is a journalist a business news news editor and a news editor and my very special guest dashan made some tweets recently and they touched me because little did I know his story and where he was coming from. I thought that it's a story that would elevate our minds, our spirit, and who we are, giving us that sense of strength and purpose. And so we are talking to Dashan this afternoon. Dashan, thanks again so much for making it Miss Kitty live. So we left off at you say where you you got a Clark's, a second on Clark's, and you wore the Clark's till the bottom gave way. So you had to put the bottom eat out. You know you wear shoes and the bottom start eat out. Right, the bottom start eat out and you then put uh cardboard uh in the bottom of the shoe uh just so that you could go to school yeah man not for that <laughs> all right tell me a little bit you also made some tweets about your mom you said at one point uh your mother was constantly being promised by men that they would help her and once she got pregnant they would leave how did you know about that did your mother make you aware of that what happened no, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a first born you know a first born for both mother and father and everybody my father growing up around with per se real children and no of my father and me of him he's still, still he's still alive living in waters okay and um but my mother being a firstborn you know i'm a single mother my mother um got pregnant with me at 18 years old yes and um being pre uh, an 18 year old without with an incomplete education mm -hmm. you can imagine with a young child uh, trying to to um feed and clothe and stuff like that with nobody around her to help and she's not working herself and depending on her mother wow that's <laughs> and, rough and um and in that case it, you know the, the family story of women without that sort of a help trying to find a man to help them around and uh, you know man come and man uh, with you until a child is born and then they are gone again. I yes. Are the same, the same story. I don't know, but I would imagine that's the same story with me, a man with my mother, until she was pregnant, then he's gone. So, how many siblings do you have? My mother has five of us, you know, me mm -hmm. and four. Um, uh, two girls and three boys. Okay. And you also mentioned sleeping on the floor uh, in this one room family dwelling. Do you remember how long that lasted for? Uh, I was I was pretty measured in in, in um, because the the all right sometimes uh, so I, I don't even want I'm trying not to 
to cry. <laughs> wow. We can cry. We cry about your dashan all the time. You can't let your tears over here. <laughs> I got you, baby. I got you. Love you. No, but dashan, you know what? Like, I want the raw emotion because, again, Elevate Fridays is about people hearing your story to know where you're coming from because I find that some people, they see you and they don't know the sacrifice or the building, the effort, the foundation that you laid to become who you are. And so we want to encourage people that even though it may seem grim, even though it may seem, oh my God, I can't do it. If Dashan Hendrix, who did it, you know, from um, poverty, who did not have a lot of amenities, never had a house, never had shoes, never had so and so, I can do it too, you know? Yes. Uh, yeah, me, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's one, it's uh, in a family room, one bed. I mean, my grandmother had five children, and when she, she moved from water to Pomar, yes. um, she took her five children with her, and you know, those Pomar houses coming on the two rooms. Right. And um, she put on two rooms at the back to try to accommodate. So you're yeah, in a house where sometimes bed is around by the living room, bed in the kitchen, anywhere a bed can catch you make people sleep. Yes. And uh, who can catch in a bed after you sleep on the floor. So yes. my brother who came up to me in Canada now, um, the two of us being the, the biggest, mm -hmm. we were on the floor sleeping and uh, my other brother and my two sisters, one of them in America, as well, um, they, they sleep, slept on the bed. Yes. Because they were younger than us, and we had to sleep on the floor. Sometimes people say, you look older than your age. Mm -hmm. And my mind was happy to tell them I'm not sure sleep on, but you know. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, so, when you tell people your age, they say, but you look older than your age. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just say, yeah, you're born at the age of the church. You're sure. <laughs> but you know, make it body because you, you know you go through some yeah. life. And, I mean, everybody now goes them age. Right? And um, I mean, we, we did that for many years until my mother died. My mother died when I was in high school. I think I was in grade 11. How did that affect you? Me, right? um, well, I knew she was going to die. Um, she had AIDS. Uh, she had contracted AIDS and she was not in the best of health, especially coming down to the last part of her life and yes. I mean she we used to have people walk and throw words and trouble my mother and stuff like that to, to this case of time it, you, you think about it and say like what would these people walk and just throw them over there and yes. I mean, it's not on a set of this, uh, people look it's not for a shop, you know. Right. And it can happen to anybody. <laughs> I can't say anybody. anybody yes. <laughs> but, but at that time, Dashan, the, the stigma, and, you know, it was a, a lot of people, it, it's still a stigma disease. Uh, yes. In, yeah. It was a big stigma. So how did that affect you? And how did you, you know, get the strength at that young age to deal with that? No. Um, what, what I, what uh, you see, one of the things is, um, which carried me through is because we knew that she was going to die. So knowing that she was going to die helped to prepare, though it kind of completely prepared you for not having a mother because I have children with no grandparents, grandmothers. Yes. <laughs> you understand what I said? Yes. So um, that, that sort of thing, you know, it, I think it was coming down to me having my CXCs. A couple of months, I think she died in April and we had CXCs in the May. So how did you manage to study? And um, I just tried to block out the guys. Everybody was there trying to tell you, hey, your mother gone already. I tried to focus, tried to focus. And they were trying to say, oh, don't, don't, don't be nice. But you cry, you're some, you know, yes. the, 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 the house tops are flat. Yes. I'm from a, a community in, in Pomer called Portsmouth, right? Very well. And the, the, the roof are flat yes so i used to go around a lot of people don't know but in the nights when i feel lonely and you just want somebody to talk you just climb up on the wall you go up and out of the light on and it's in the night by yourself you look up in the stars and you cry by yourself wow and you cry by yourself you stay there until one two o'clock in the night and you come down and you go and you go down to your bed but i mean or i used to have a aki tree in my yard my front yard most of the times when I wanted to be alone, I'd climb up in the kitchen and go in the top. Wow. And I'm there by myself. <laughs> and just be because you yeah, live in a family also there are sometimes twenty people in the house. Yeah. So to get so some you peace. Have no privacy. Yeah. Yeah. You have no 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 space for yourself. Yeah. So you have to create that space for yourself. 
and uh, the Aki tree or the whole stop was my space. Yeah. That I created for myself and which I would, uh, some of the times I would just uh, go on the whole stop or around the backyard or sit in a corner with a book because I love reading. I yeah. Love reading. I read anything that I could put my hand on. I'm, I'm happy that you said that because I was going to ask you what was your mode of escape because living under those circumstances, your mother passing away from AIDS, uh, you know, the situation that you're now in, the uncertainty, just everything that's on you as the firstborn. And I know the pressure that comes with being the firstborn, you know, you want to be the one to set the example. How, what was your way to escape and how did you dream, you know, in that situation that you're in, how did you dream? dream to get out and to see what other life there was it was dreams which kept me you know because you could look at your circumstance you know look at what you wanted to be and ironically um no i'm doing a phd in economics right oh now. wow round of applause for the no that's not talk so fast make it so keen like a first no man a phd in economics phd in economics from coming from not having school shoes mother dying at a young age not si from sleeping on the ground from being in a house a crowded house going on the house stop to escape dashan hendrix you know you know you know sometimes i i, I, wrote, I wrote i got hand me down but you know, so you know the, the word that you can use to refer to hand me down second hand no the key word Oh wow, yes, Ina. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, Ina. So mm -hmm. They used to call me. You get my friend. And I can say, okay. There's so, business about them thing there. So persons uh, used to call you that? Yeah. Oh wow. Why does that? I'm sorry about some, uh, you know, all of those atrocities, and you know, you know, children can be very unkind, and that is why I, I hope parents also listening will teach their children to be kind to other children because you never know what children are going through. You know, teach your children to be compassionate, to be sensitive, to be kind to other children because you never know another child's situation. So yes, Dashan, so you're there reading your books and you're dreaming, not looking at your situation. Did you always dream? Oh, okay, tell me about, did you always want to be a journalist? How did that come about? How did you even make it to university? How did you make it to university? I'm going to see if I can give you a summary of the story. I, I, if you're ready, you say, all right, I'll, I mean, that in high school, lost my way and stuff like that. Yes. Um, I, I remember one day I got suspended from school in grade, the first week of school in grade nine. I can't go home and tell my mother that I get suspended, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to keep that to myself because you know what's coming. Right. And uh, so I still would go and go to school in Spanish, but I can't go to school. So you know what I ended up doing? Going to the library, the Spanish Town Library, oh. and we sit there every single day and read every book for the entire year, school year. Why were you and suspended? I was suspended. I was coming from, I used to play rugby back in the, um, when I was at um, St. Kajuka. One of the things we I tried to do in school was to play a sport because you would get food. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So you join a sports team and you play the sport because you know you get a lunch every single day. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the ways in which you try to ensure that you got some food. You go play a sport. I played cricket in, in grade 7, uh, rugby in grade 8 and grade 9. And then, uh, well, when I got chosen from grade 9, I went back to the rugby team again when I came back to school. I was there, um, the principal, I was... Uh, the principal was talking and we were leaving school one day and she called me and said we should put her pants in her school. I said, Miss, says, after five, uh, I mean, when I like, we're a prisoner. And she said, what do you mean we're a prisoner? I said, you see, when I build gate inside, we used to have one gate outside, but then because of the overflow, when they close the school gate early in the mornings when students are late, they build a second gate inside, so you won't be on the road. You'd be on the first gate and in. So when they build that, um, I was in another prison. She said, no, sir, you're too bright. Uh, and tell the, the, the dean of discipline to send me for a day to mm. think about what I said. But I can't tell my mother that I get suspended from school. Right. So I kept that to myself. Yes. And went to the library. And I think that was what shaped my life. Because before then, I believe I would have been a doctor. Yes. Because in high school, in primary school, I should say, I used to get a lot of prizes for sciences. And, and which primary school was that again? Portsmouth Primary. Right. Yes. 
Yeah. And you get a lot of prizes for Saints at the end of Christmas giving, uh, prize giving at Christmas. Yes. And I remember one day, somebody said to my mother, um, the boy bright, you know, where am I going to turn? And my mother said, boy, I turn doctor, man. Mm -hmm. And right away in my mind, I was saying, okay, I'm going to turn a doctor. And then he started to work towards that. Yes. So I was doing a lot of sciences and putting my interest in But that was my mother's dream, not my dream. Yeah. When and did your dream, when did you birth your dream? My dream birth when I was suspended, I was going to the library to read. Yeah. I read every book in the library, every single book in the library I read every day ago. And I started to read, read, read about the development of nations. Yeah. And I was interested in learning development, read how the U.S. developed, or Europe, or Russia, Japan, China. And uh, reading all these countries, Germany, or they developed France and stuff like that. And I wanted to learn how these countries develop. And I started to work in my mind, why is Jamaica where it is? Why can't Jamaica develop like these countries and become wealthy first world nations? Mm -hmm. And uh, reading the history of these countries. And ironically, his reading the history of these countries led me to want to learn the development of countries. And then I started to try to find out how could I learn how to develop a country. Yes. And that's where I got an interest in economics. Wow. Amazing. Uh, and uh, so history pushed me to economics. It's so ironic, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> you want to, the two are, in, in, are linked, you know, you know, there's a nexus there. Yes. Yeah, because you learn about development of nations. I learn about the, the industrial revolution. I wanted, in my mind as a teenager, I wanted to see Jamaica developing to become first class, first class infrastructure, yes. first class education, a first class um justice system i begin to to have an interest in seeing those things but i said oh i'm going to university to study politics and economics yes and uh, and uh, in my uh, one time i used to say well i'm not going to become prime minister i don't think i have those ambitions anymore oh wow well still not too late you know what i mean anything is possible because look at you now a phd candidate uh for uh you get your phd in economics but dashan you were poor you never had any money like that how did you manage to go to university get your first degree get your master's and now you're a phd candidate um, it was easy at the master's level and the PhD, well, I paid my PhD school fee in cash in full and I never borrowed a cent. Oh, wow. Round of applause. Who <laughs> oh, could it be but God? Big up for the God. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Look at that. Yes. Uh, and uh, when, and uh, when I was in, um, I mean, when I was in undergrad, when I, I was working at UHWI pharmacy, I went there for two years after, after high school. Yes. Um, in 98 and 99, I went there and I was working. I remember January 4, 1998 was the start date. And I was working there. I remember not the, the, the money wasn't even enough to come to work. <laughs> yes. And you have to call it my, my aunt. She's in um, America now to give me a um, bus fare to finish the rest of the month. Because you're getting a little bit of money by the time you my, my My responsibility when I started to work was to pay the water bill. Yes. So every, every month the water bill comes. That's my responsibility. I paid the water bill. I had to give my aunt money to help send my sister and my brother to school. Yes. And then, uh, you know, they, when it reached like the third week of the month, you broke. Yes. Blank my week. I had to money. <laughs> my nana money for go work. And she gave some bus here and you go work or some of the time because it's government. Uh, so I thought you could say to the boy, my nana money for come to work today, you know. But then um, being an inventory clerk, because I was an inventory clerk in the, in the pharmacy. Yes. They would, the, the entire hospital, UA hospital, depended on me doing my job to have jobs. Yes. In the hospital. So if I never did my work, if you come to the hospital, you won't have any job. Mm -hmm. Because I was the one who would be in charge of the, well, I have a, a pharmacist who heads the, 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 the inventory department. Yes. But the underground person going through the jobs every single day, making sure that jobs are ordered, making sure that we have our jobs, making sure that jobs are going down to the wards, making sure that people who come to the hospital, the pharmacy to buy jobs, have them. That was on me as a, as a, as a teenager. Yes. So your responsibilities from early uh, were many and, you know, heavy is the head that wears the crown. So you went through university, uh, you know, you, know how was... Days are you, you know? Yes. It's a good thing on the fine campus because when I worked out the, 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 the match and I looked and I said, boy, if I was to find bus to go to campus every day, 
Um, it would be cheaper to live on campus. It, yeah. it worked out cheaper to get a room. And I, I remember when I went for my package down at Assembly Hall. Remember them days there? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I went up for my package. I saw my sociology teacher at the time who taught me sociology in high school, um, in A level. Yes. And he said to me, Where are you going? I'm going to tell him. And he said, Why you get some years in the A you know? I'm mean, going to say, Because. Yeah. At that, that time, I never got my results as yet. Yes. I um, I know the university that called and they said they have a package for me. And then when I look, my, my teachers are outside the pharmacy telling me that, well, I'm a mash up exam. I said, me, mash up exam. Then said, yeah, you get A. Wow. And then the next day, I said, me, me, serious. You know, the newspaper, the school didn't even ask me a purpose. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I said, go home the evening and I said, the, the doctors then. Then they used to have doctors. You know, we yes. Have yes. And doctor said, well, go on. I'm saying, well, go on. And then everybody are talking, applying for me. When I look, one of them show me, say, is that my face then in the newspaper with A's? Wow. And then, like I said, make it A? Yeah. I've never done the exam. <laughs> look at God. Yeah. <laughs> the exam, but, and the teachers come and say, hey, you know, and the teachers come and look for me. And the principal was poor because they're saying, the other time, they're saying, getting an A in A level is not ordinary. So one time, keep right. Man, it's not right again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the PhD, sir. Stop it. You have 10 brain, please. Hello, back up. So you're graduate. So you graduate. Went, you went through UA. You graduated. Uh, what, what what were your siblings saying? And you know what was your family saying at that point? Because now there is. Were you the first person to graduate from in university in your family? The very first person in my household to get any sort of tertiary education. I mean, my mother and her sisters and brother. Um, they did elementary school because back in the 70s, um, it's elementary school at all. Yes. And the more for most poor people, they never matriculated to high school. Then can they have a win scholarship and anything? You read about things in a yeah. book, you have a scholarship. Yes. And um, they never matriculated beyond elementary school. So I was the first person in my household to go to university. Wow. And to this day, so my time, I'll try to figure out how did that happen? Um, what did you do? But I never thought anything special about it because I had in my mind a focus and when I remember when I in in 2000 May 2000 May June 2000 when I was doing A levels I aged myself don't it and at the age I was achieving at the age now worry yourself and uh, uh, when I was doing A levels I remember in August, early August, when people say, "What are you going to do in September?" I'm saying, "I go you wait. I'm not going to get no, <laughs> no." I'm saying, no, I'm yes. But I go you with them. Say, "I go you with September." I'm saying, "Yeah." Never well, you spoke it into being, and that's part of what it is. You know, you dream and big. On, one of the things which helped me through um, on campus is living on campus. So I used to live on Stella Republic, yes, on Taylor Hall. And um, being a camaraderie with men, they ensure that each other um, is not hungry. Yeah. One of the things they drilled into us that we look out for each other. But apart from that, I had a lovely, a lovely um, girlfriend in college who um, used to help me out with food. Nice. Even though she is poor herself, but I remember one day, I never, you know, you don't like to have burden to people. Yes. I made them know see your own girl all the while, and I remember. One day I was in my room on Sunday and I was hungry like a dog. Mm -hmm. And Nanam she eat and she went home to St. Anne and she came back. And she was saying to me, her mother said, her mother would pack food for her and to eat throughout the week, right? Yes. Uh, cooking the food on Sunday and give them for each other little thing. And she come back and she said, eat early. I mean, I eat no food, you know. I probably never eat from yesterday, you know. Wow. And she is like she knows something that I eat, but she knows something that I tell her. Yes. And I want to be a burden to her. And then she come and she eat the salad and she start giving me food. <laughs> wow. She start feeding you. Yeah. Yeah. She start feeding you. Oh, nice. You see, God <laughs> sends angels in different forms, you know, Dashaun, you know? When she starts, she doesn't take a um, she may end up eating food and we dance she don't spam me. I think it's kind of hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of them style there. Not true for the taste, good man. I mean, that's why, you know, yeah. Go and embrace it. No, but yes. a lot of people help me along my way. I mean, I couldn't do it alone. I, I, I remember in my school, this lady named Miss Mawat. She's dead now. Um, she used to have an auto parts store on Maxwell Avenue. Yes. Auto Limited. It's closed down. I think that, that is where the transport authority is now. 
And um, one of my aunt's church sister went to her and told her about my situation, and she said she would help me. Mm-hmm. And so in grade 11, down to the latter part, she started to help give me lunch money for school. And I remember when the teacher in high school recommended me for 13 subjects. I couldn't do 13 subjects because I don't have no money for people's school um, subjects. It's not like how the government pays for some subjects for students. Yes. And I know, I think, NCD pay for some as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, had, we had to find money in, two, in, in the late 90s to pay our, our um, fees. Yes. And uh, I couldn't, when I beg, I only got enough money to pay for five. To this day, I only have five CXEs. Wow. I only pay for five. Wow. CXEs only. Dashan. I for the five and did them. What, is, what, you know, through all the poverty, the loss uh, of your mom, uh, you know, the, your dad not being in your life, is he in your life now? What does he have to say? Uh, I don't talk about my father a lot. Um... I don't have a relationship per se with him. Mm-hmm. I have an aunt in Waterhouse who sometimes try to call me and say, hey, you're a big man now and your father a big man. The tone must can meet and uh, 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 my aunt Laverne should always try to push me for a relationship. But I don't have a relationship which I can um, lean on. I mean, I remember one time in university, I was at school, I was so hungry, and I said, I go watch house to look for him and see if I can get some some money from him. Yes. When I was going down the road, and uh, I'm walking down the road, I was come off the bus stop walking down the road to go to his I saw his, his common law wife, and she told me that he's uh, from Friday to the other first time I come home on Sunday. Anyway, I go down there and I said, I'll be your money for lunch money. He, he counted like this is in like probably 2001 you know, mm-hmm. or 2002 and he, he counted out like $50 worth of silver gave me. I'm mean, like I said, the water come on my eye <laughs> and like I said, geez, uh, it better to me, I mean, I say, better you did say, you know, the, mm-hmm. the money. I count out $50 worth of silver, mostly $1 and give him a say, okay, all right, everything good. I'm going to go back to school and from that day I never asked him, I mean, it was probably the first time I've deliberately gone in my life and say, hey, I'm in university, I try to make a way for myself and thing. And these days when I hear people I say, boy, I see my boy on TV, they look at me like I say, oh, come on. Yes. Um, in my mind, I don't say to him, you know, but I say, come on. I mean, I go and look for him from time to time. Um, I have two children of my own now, a girl and a boy, 13 and 7 years old. Lovely. I carry them from time to time to look for him, but I was determined that the relationship that I never had with my father would be the relationship I would have with my children. Yes. And uh, um, I mean, uh, I have an, well, I have a relationship with them in which I, I I I try to be there for them for everything yes. that they want, and and just to fill in that role that I never had, and knowing and growing up without a father, I never wanted and don't want them to experience not growing up with a father. Yes. So, I, I mean, some of the times they have a hard day at work and driving home. By the way, I still live in Portmore. Yes. And they're driving home, not at the same place though. And they're driving home, and you just remember them and you just smile to yourself and say, wow. Yes. Um, these, these children, they just bring some amount of joy in you. Yes. And you, you, you just feel my, my greatest achievement Despite your think about uh, um, reading for a PhD, you know, well, my greatest achievement is having my children because they are the ones who keep me level They are the ones who keep me focused. Yes, and, and give you purpose. With, yeah, without them, I don't know where I'd have been. I probably, you probably want to know me. <laughs> wow. Well, well I'm, I'm happy that I know you. I know the world knows of you. And I'm sure that your children are proud of you. Your family members are proud of you. And I want to thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And in terms of people listening to you right now, Dashan, uh, what is the takeaway from your story? What do you want people who feel like you know they can't make it or them can't bother and the circle their circumstances so bad that boy you know nothing did it for me i'm just one give up and i can't bother what would be your word of encouragement coming from where you're coming from and now where you are what would be your word of encouragement to them the current circumstances don't determine your future you determine your future 
Yes, yes, sir. If you if you want a future, you can create the future that you want. I mean, some of the times you need help, and uh, being conscious that I got help, I try to help people as well. Yes. But if you want good, my grandmother always say, if you want good, you know how to run. But if you also want good, you have to push to get good for yourself as well. Amen. You, you have to push to get that. It's not going to come to you, not going to this kind of manner. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go out and do it. And try to make it, uh, try to push to get it. Yes. I mean, yeah, you have to you have to put in the work. I mean, I by great men reach and catch. We're not attained by sudden they flight, sudden flight but they, yeah. while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. They work throughout the night. Yeah. And when always work for your want and have a, have a goal yes. and move towards it. So it's, it's, it's simple, it's no magic. It's pretty simple. simple Consistency simple and discipline. And you work towards it. When you saw yourself on TV for the first time, I mean, how did that make you feel? I mean, you probably grew up not even watching TV, but then you're on TV now. How does that make you feel? Ah! Boy, oh boy, that was when I was working at CVM. Yes. Before I came down to RGR now. I'm trying to remember. I mean, I'm still a pretty shy person. I don't know. As I tell your producers, because of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And we appreciate it, Dashan. Uh, we're, we're in the business of elevating persons. And of I'm course. I'm a pretty shy person. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people, people say you're shy on TV. To me, it's, it's a job. Yes. Just like, uh, um, just like if I was in a bank and I'd have to be a teller or if I was any other job, it's a, it's a job. Yes. So it's not, it, it, there's nothing magical to it. To, to go in front of a camera, yeah, you get shy some. <laughs> well, guess what? It's a job that you execute very well and you acquit yourself well. And so it's always a joy for us to listen to you and see you on TV and for us to know now, uh, you know, your story and where you're coming from and where you are now. I'm quite sure that you have inspired many of my listeners and viewers uh, this afternoon. And I want to thank you so much for being candid, for being uh, and sharing with us your journey as to where you're coming from and where you are now, your perseverance, your resilience, your tenacity uh, you are an overcomer and I want to wish you all the best in the world and hope that you will continue to strive and thrive in as many ways as possible and as soon as you get that PhD please let us know over here so we can continue the celebration honey because we've got you covered and all the best that's enough love one love respect and lots of blessings to you and your family Man, All right, thank you so very much, Dashan Hendrix. Round of applause right there, ladies and gentlemen. On an Elevate Friday, Dashan Hendrix, journalist, business news editor, and news editor, and my very special guest right here on Elevate Friday. Choose from